We live in a rather nice galaxy. From a dark location, you can see it stretching across the night sky. From a distance outside it, it's thought you'd see it as a grand barred spiral galaxy. It also has a rather large galactic habitable zone. Essentially, if you're not near the radiation environment of its center or various star clusters, and not out at the edges where there isn't that much material, your planet has a fair chance to develop life, if you have the right basic elements available to you. We live near one of the spiral arms of the galaxy, something of a calm backwater, and our planet clearly has life. There may well be others. But the Milky Way can be a tumultuous place, where entire star systems can get tossed out at high speed under the right circumstances. All galaxies should be like this, meaning that there is a population of stars, likely an enormous amount, along with their planetary systems, that wander intergalactic space indefinitely. These would be extraordinarily difficult to find, unfortunately, needles in something far bigger than a haystack. But there are instances of planets detected in other galaxies beyond our own, usually by chance. These collectively are termed extragalactic planets, in the sense that they are not in the Milky Way, but may be located within other galaxies or beyond their own. These fall into two categories. The first is a planet or system of planets bound to a star, like our solar system. The second are wandering rogue planets with no star, that wander space on their own. No extragalactic planet has thus far been directly discovered. There's a reason for this. It's extremely difficult to detect planets at such extreme distances, even within our own galaxy. For example, the current most distant planets known in the Milky Way come in at about 27,000 light years from the Sun. That's a long way, but it's still less than a quarter of the size of the entire galaxy. While there are very likely many more planets further out in this galaxy, we have yet to be able to detect them with the equipment we have. And indeed, we may never know about a majority of the planets present in the Milky Way, due to both distance and the sheer numbers of them that must be out there. And we have only a handful of methods right now to detect the presence of planets around other stars. It's even more difficult for extragalactic planets, but there's no reason they shouldn't exist and indeed be common. And while there are no directly observed examples, there are some indirectly discovered candidates. In 1996, observations were being made of a quasar being gravitationally microlensed by another foreground galaxy. In the foreground galaxy, an anomaly was seen that is believed to be due to the passing of a roughly three Earth mass planet. This fluke event, which can't ever be confirmed, may have given us a glimpse of a planet an astonishing four billion light years away at a time when the very first exoplanets in our own galaxy were just being discovered. A more recent discovery involving microlensing is an exoplanet discovered in the Andromeda galaxy that's thought to be a very large gas giant, bigger than Jupiter. A planet was also detected around an X-ray source in the Whirlpool galaxy. The system is thought to either be a neutron star or a black hole, accompanied by a supergiant star with a planet eclipsing the X-ray source. Certainly not a good environment for life, but a planet in another galaxy nonetheless. Perhaps the most interesting indirect detection of extragalactic planets came during another microlensing event. This of the quasar RX J1131-1231. In the foreground galaxy doing the lensing, evidence was found for a large group of rogue planets not bound to any stars. The masses of these rogue planets seem to range from the size of our moon to roughly the size of Jupiter. These planets are wandering their galaxy aimlessly, some for untold amounts of time, and others may get ejected from that galaxy to wander intergalactic space. But even in intergalactic space, life remains an option. While life requires certain criteria, such as liquid as a solvent, not necessarily but most likely water, along with nutrients and an energy source, this is all still possible with intergalactic exoplanets not bound to stars. There are two ways to provide the energy source to keep life going and liquid water liquid. One is obviously geothermal heating. This would be things like geothermal vents here on Earth, and even underwater volcanism to keep the temperature of the rogue planet up. Another option is the presence of a huge gas giant planet, with life existing at one of its moons in a similar way to how Jupiter's gravity flexes Europa to provide heating to maintain a huge ocean underneath a shell of ice. This too is possible between the galaxies, but good luck finding any of these kinds of planets given the distances. 
We may never detect any of these or any potential life on them. But where it gets much more difficult is the question of civilizations. Here you probably need the presence of a star for this to occur, or at least be detectable. Unbound intergalactic or extragalactic exoplanets would be very limited on energy sources despite them being present. They might have geothermal or gravitational flexing, but this would place very severe limitations on both the development of complex life itself and even more limitations on intelligence and a civilization. If by some chance intelligence did arise, it would be a locked-in intelligence. This seems to be a rather sad scenario. They probably wouldn't even have astrophysics since all they'd see by looking up is a wall of ice. They might conclude that's all there is, though they might also suspect that there's more due to the presence of fissures and water leaving their environment. Perhaps somewhere out there there is a debate raging under an ice shell about what lies beyond the ice. I'd imagine they'd be in for quite a surprise when they found out about the barely fathomable vastness of intergalactic space. They might wonder if they are alone, but for all intents and purposes, they may as well be. But the odd thing here is that such an alien world might seem more familiar to us than us to them. They would not have dry land, at least in the same way we do, and thus may not have even conceived of creatures that can walk around in an atmosphere rather than a liquid. But in our case, we have both an atmospheric and oceanic environment on this planet, and that might lend us some insight on imagining what life might look like beneath an ice shell. They would possess some type of aquatic physiology, which is extremely varied on our planet, but perhaps they might not be unlike that of Earth due to convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is an interesting topic in itself, since it may provide us with one of the few means we have to imagine what an alien species might vaguely look like. Our planet is home to a truly bewildering array of bioforms. A parakeet doesn't look much like a hippopotamus, yet both are complex life present on this world. But sometimes things converge between species simply because a good design is a good design. An example here would be dolphins and sharks. They have similar lines and fins, yet are only very distantly related to the point that it wasn't relation that created that convergent physiology. It was the aquatic conditions of their evolution. This may be true for any aquatic civilization that they might look something like fish, though just as easily they might look like jellyfish or cephalopods. But at least it's an idea, albeit very general. The problem is that aquatic, complex life doesn't usually lend itself to making and using tools, though there are exceptions, the octopus being one. But otherwise, it's difficult to manufacture something with aquatic physiology. Even harder would be mastering the smelting of metals underwater, since fire is a problem, though there is the volcanism. In any case, the ice shell worlds one might find in the universe do not seem good candidates for civilizations. Intelligence maybe, but beyond that, not so much. But there are scenarios that can be imagined where an advanced civilization might still exist and be detectable in the space between the galaxies, though it seems unlikely anyone would just happen to be pointing a radio telescope at just the right place to ever pick them up. These would include civilizations that developed around ejected stars. It's less likely for a pre-existent civilization to get ejected, due to it usually being a phenomenon of younger star systems, or very hostile conditions like a pair of black holes, though it can also happen during galactic mergers. More likely are civilizations that formed in the intergalactic medium after ejection, or left intentionally. These would be lonely civilizations indeed, separated from other wandering star systems from distances in general far greater than what would be found in a galactic environment. These would be civilizations more or less limited to the resources of their own star system, which might compel them to try to artificially join a galaxy eventually through the use of a Shkadov thruster megastructure, essentially half a Dyson sphere, to propel their star towards a galaxy and eventual capture. This would become increasingly essential for a civilization as the universe ages, due to raw materials growing scarcer and scarcer within their own system. On the other hand, such a remote location might favor a civilization if they've converted themselves into a machine civilization. Here they might take advantage of the very low temperatures present in the intergalactic medium for more efficient computation, though it's hard to envision them not also eventually going in search of more raw materials. In the end though, this would be a hard existence for any civilization, and perhaps an unlikely one. It may be that the overwhelming rule of civilizations is that they are confined to galaxies, 
and perhaps are too rare to appear in the intergalactic medium very often, if ever, but at least it's food for the imagination. And as resources in the universe grow scarce and the stars begin to burn out, perhaps the last civilizations, for all intents and purposes, will all be intergalactic. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently worried about the ice shell world civilization drilling through the ice to reach the surface. Their mythology might say that they will find infinite delicious cake, or a universe made of towels where everyone doesn't have to be so wet all the time. Then they reach the surface and find the vacuum. Very horrifying, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.